Love this Chinese classic Mushu pork with all the different textures from the egg to the meat to the veggies, all wrapped up in a chewy homemade tortilla. You gotta check it out. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is behind the camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. We have a surprise guest today. This is my daughter, Ella. Hi. She has grown up so much since the last time she was on an episode, but she has developed a love for baking and bread making and anything to do with flour. So today she is actually here to show us how to make tortillas. One of those nights when we were having Mexican, Ella decided that she wanted to try making tortillas and oh my goodness, homemade tortillas are so much better than store-bought. So we thought this would be a really good option actually to fill with mushu pork. So here I have two cups of flour and I'm going to add a three quarter teaspoons of salt. And then you're just going to whisk it until everything is combined. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of vegetable oil. I see, Ella, that you're more precise than I am. I don't want to mess anything up. <laughs> it's one. You know, Can't Be Bothered Flo would just, you know, pour in some oil and probably mess up the recipe. <laughs> That's true, and we know how exact <laughs> baking needs to be. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm going to add three quarter cups of warm water. I think it's about 40 degrees Celsius. Should have taken the whisk out before I did that. Okay. And then I'm just going to start mixing it with my hands. And then you're just going to mix it like this until it becomes no longer sticky so that's not sticking to your hands anymore. And if you need, you can add more flour or more water depending on what the consistency is. I do find with making anything that has a dough that the humidity in the weather actually affects whether or not the dough is too sticky or not sticky enough or um, too dry depending on the weather. Should I help by adding some more flour, Ella? <laughs> yes, please. Maybe like a <laughs> tablespoon? Tablespoon? Ish, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm just gonna dump some. Yeah. Like that? I think so, yes. Thank you. I think it's almost there. So if you stretch it out and you see that it's still a little bit sticky, so if my stick, my hands over here, there's still dough sticking to it. So that uh, means you might need a little bit more flour. Okay. Like another tablespoon-ish amount. <laughs> That? Yeah, that's good. Then you can start going like this just because it's easier to get the flour incorporated with the rest of the dough. Like stretching it out a little bit? Yeah, kind of like kneading it, but not really. Okay, I think it's good to go now. Awesome. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to need to sprinkle a little bit of flour onto the surface that you're going to be kneading the dough on okay. so that it doesn't stick. Okay. Like that? Yes. And I'm just going to put this on here. Try to get the last remaining bits of the dough from the bowl. Leave no dough behind, girl. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to start kneading it. And how I learned to knead it when I was at school is that you can just stick your, the bottom of your palm in here and then pull it up, turn it around, and flip it maybe like a quarter. And then just keep on doing that until it's no longer sticky. Again, you might need to add more flour. Onto the... Onto here. Oh, onto the board. Yeah. And then you can just keep on doing that until you get a nice smooth ball of dough. Okay, so it's almost done. I'm just gonna knead it like a couple more times. And then, so you see here, it's super smooth over here. My hands aren't sticking to it anymore. So now you can start to separate it. And we're gonna make 16 small tortillas. So, let's see. So then, once you get these, you can just roll them into kind of like a ball and then press it down so it's kind of like a 
puck sized, or a puck kind of shape, so that it's easier to roll out into a circle. I'm going to leave those over here. Can I help you with that? Yes, please. Yeah, some of these are like way bigger than others. Yeah. So after you're done rolling them into these shapes, or shaping them into these shapes, you can put them on a plate or just wherever you want and cover them with a towel so that the dough doesn't dry out. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, I'm just gonna cover them. Okay, and I'm going to roll out this one over here. So I guess I can just start rolling it out and hope that it doesn't turn into like a weird triangle shape. There you go. Thanks. How flat do you need to roll it for? I think it needs to be pretty flat, because otherwise it's like kind of thick and kind of hard to eat sometimes. So I'm almost done, and I'm just going to roll it out a couple more times. All right, so you can see how thin it is. That's a lot better. OK, and you're going to put it on another plate and cover it so that the dough doesn't dry out, because I'm going to wait a little bit before I make them. Right, so we're going to cook them on a crepe pan. How high is the heat? Uh, medium high. Medium high. Okay. Okay. I guess we could just have to wait until it heats up. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna put this onto your pan and you're gonna wait maybe 30 seconds. Oh, you can see that it's starting to cook through. Oh, yeah. It's much faster on the butane stove than it on is. <laughs> Our new glass top stove. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. And for maybe another 30 seconds. And you're going to keep on flipping it until you start to see golden brown spots appearing on the tortilla. I'm gonna flip it over now. As you can see, there are some brown spots starting to appear. And it's also starting to bubble a little bit, right? Yeah. Looks good. It does. I'm going to flip it maybe one more time. I don't want it to burn, but I want it to be more brown. And once it's done, you want to put it on a plate and cover it with a paper towel so that it keeps warm. Paper towel or tea towel? Tea towel. So Ella's going to finish the tortillas in the kitchen, and I will show you how to make the mushu. So for sake of time today, we wanted to just prep all the ingredients and just show you how to cook the mushu pork since Ella showed you how to make the tortillas. I have half a pound of pork sirloin that I've already sliced into thin slices. And if you don't have pork sirloin, I bought it because it was on sale. You can use pork tenderloin. That would also be a good option. I'm adding two teaspoons of soy sauce. one teaspoon of rice wine, and you can use Shaoxing wine, which is what I would normally use, but they've been out at the store, so I'm just using this, which is a great substitute. And if not, you can always use bourbon, whiskey, anything like that would add some really yummy flavors. I'm also adding about an eighth of a teaspoon ground white pepper. And we're just gonna let this marinate while we prep the rest of the ingredients. For the sauce, we are using one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of hoisin sauce, one teaspoon of soy sauce, half a teaspoon of sesame oil, and two tablespoons of water. 
Okay, and give it a good stir, mix it together, and we're gonna set this aside, because this will go into uh, the dish when we cook it all together. I'm using some wood ear, or it's also called black fungus, and I really like the texture of this in the mushu pork. It comes in a pack sort of like this and it's dried and it takes about half an hour to just rehydrate it in like hot water or like warm to like boiled water. This is about a tablespoon of dried that has expanded to maybe about half a cup. I am using three medium eggs. You can use two to three large eggs if you like. We're just gonna beat them lightly. Okay, and set that aside. I also sliced up one small onion, two stalks of a green onion. I've got two cloves of garlic that I'm going to uh, run through the garlic press. And I just have a few pieces of green onions on the side just for garnish. Okay, I'm just gonna heat up my wok. We're gonna start with the eggs. And we want this on medium high. Now, I've been really enjoying cooking with Ella. She has been such, um, yeah, it's such a joy to be working with. When she was little, I was really impatient. I just wanted to get dinner on the table and I didn't have the time to really teach her how to cook. And as she got older, she just started looking for recipes. She started helping me in the kitchen and taking a foods class at school has um, increased her skills on like what she's able to do. And it has been, yeah, just such a pleasant, joy and time spent together uh, working with her in the kitchen. Adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil. I'm gonna use half my eggs first. So I just want kind of a pancake. So I wanna slice it up into strips. And if you can't be bothered with that, you can just scramble it, no big deal. Okay, just gonna put that on my cutting board and get the next one going. Okay, taking that, just putting it on top of the other and we're gonna slice into this with a knife in a second. I'm actually gonna cheat and just use my scraper because I need to use it anyways. So I'm just gonna cut it into little strips. And for us, it's just a, it has to do with the mouth feel and just getting the textures right. Right, turning the wok back on to medium high. Adding a tablespoon of vegetable oil. And then getting the onions in. You know those days when you're just moving too fast for your body to catch up to your brain? <laughs> I was wondering, where, where's all the veggies? Well, because I haven't chopped up my cabbage. I'm using half a head of just green cabbage. And we're just gonna shred it. All right, continuing on, I'm going to press my garlic into the pan, to the wok. You know what, if you don't have a wok, you can just use a large frying pan, no big deal. Look how juicy this garlic is from my garden. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, that's what fresh garlic looks like. Oh. Not the dried stuff we get in the supermarket. Okay, you just wanna stir this for about 30 seconds while the garlic cooks and it becomes fragrant. You don't want it to burn. Push all your ingredients to the side and add your pork. Okay, 
Just gonna stir this up now. I want the pork to be fully cooked through. Once it's just cooked through, add your cabbage. Stir this up a little bit. Add your wood ear. Adding the sauce. Now we just want the cabbage to cook through and the sauce will help to do that as it heats up and steams the cabbage. All right, so that was cooking for about two to three minutes and see how the cabbage has wilted and the sauce has kind of steamed it up. I'm adding my eggs back in and I'm gonna to toss in the green onions. I just want the onions to cook in a little bit so they're not like super raw. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. It's very reminiscent of Sandong restaurant in San Francisco where we used to live. We used to love eating there. This was one of our favorite dishes. All right, what have we got? Ta-da! Amazing. It looks super amazing. Thanks so much, Ella. You're welcome. Let's make one for Bubba. They look so good. I guess maybe that's too much filling, huh? Yeah, let's not uh, get overly ambitious, Flo. <laughs> All right, how about that? Yeah, that's conservative. You know, guys, I always put too much on there. <laughs> I'll give you a piece of green onion because we know you like that sort of thing. And would you like some hoisin sauce on top? Uh, but of course. Does that look amazing or what? Uh, amazing. Are you all ready for? Oh yeah. The taste. Gotta love a team effort, right? And when you come together and you make different things that comes together. Oh, looking so forward to diving into this. Ella, fantastic. Yes, tortillas makes a wonderful wrap for the mushu. Fantastic. Look at the color in this all together. Whew. I love it that it's not the, um, the thin, thin Chinese crepes you get in the restaurant because they kind of fall apart really easy. And so you can't really manhandle, you know, getting the stuffing in there, the mushu in there. And uh, once it starts overwhelming the pancake, it just falls apart. But this one, look at this. You can totally jam it full. Get that taco grip on there. Oh, it smells so good. There we go. Mmm, so good, dudes. Mmm, you know, you talk about mouthfeel and textures, the mushu isn't overly mushy, so you still get the texture of the individual vegetables of the components that go in there. It doesn't all get lost in a mush. And um, it just contributes to that party in your mouth, you know? And that tortilla, it's soft, it's got a little bit of a chew in there. It lends itself so well to this. And of course the extra hoisin sauce, I would add a little bit more to have that sauce just oozing out a little bit more, but that's just me. Uh, excess in some places, but uh, yeah, this is so good. Look at it, it stays together. Awesome, thanks dude. Yeah. It was such a joy having you on set today, Ella. I love cooking with you. I love that I can teach you stuff and I love that you can teach me stuff because I wasn't gonna be bothered with making tortillas, but I love that you love to do it. So we're happy to have you cooking for us anytime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for more simple, easy Asian flavors, check it out. I will see you over there.